Yes, students, this is Mr. Castellano telling you how to write the ELA Regents Task 3 essay. We've been through this already. Okay, here's the directions. Don't flip out. It's easy. Just recognize what's important. What's important is highlighted in brown. Okay, now here's the directions for this particular essay. You have to do the Task 3 English Regents Essay for A Sound of Thunder by Ray Bradbury. Yeah! Alright, so if you lost it because you're irresponsible, go on Google. Look it up. Print it out. Waste 14 pages of your paper. That's why you shouldn't lose the papers that I give you. Now, let me tell you how to annotate. You can annotate on the left to understand the story, and you can under annotate on the right to love the story. Let me tell you what I mean. You should understand the story over here. Who's doing the action? What are they doing? Where is it taking place? When and why? How? But also, love the story. Okay? Interact with the story. You should be reading with a pen. Because the writer is speaking to you, you should speak back, comment back, ask questions, make predictions, underline words you don't know. This will all add to your reading comprehension, which will add to your understanding more stories, which will add to your graduating high school, going to college, and finding a great job. We've been through this already. A summary of A Sound of Thunder by Ray Bradbury. This man gets $10,000. He has no better things to spend it on than to go back in time and hunt dinosaurs. He hears that Keith is president and Dusha the dictator is not. And there's one rule that he had that he learns in going back to the past. Do not stray off the path. Why? Because if he strays off the path, he could kill a mouse. And a fox would have eaten that mouse. And a lion would have eaten that fox. And a caveman would have eaten that lion. And because that caveman couldn't eat people who were born because of that caveman, didn't live. And so people who are here today do not exist. And that's why you cannot mess with the future. Okay, on with the story. Here's a part of the story which shows this caveat or warning. And let's move on with the story. So Eccles goes back to the past with three other people. He sees the Tyrannosaurus Rex. He flips out because he's so big. Maybe men weren't meant to see dinosaurs. All right, He surely wasn't, and he just runs right off the path and away. He ran off the path. He ran on the dirt. He stepped on something that was probably important. Now, he go back to the future. He notices that the present day... Is the same, but is a little bit different. And he hears that the other guy who originally lost the election, Deutscher, is now president. And at the end, Travis, the safari guide leader, points a gun at Eccles, and we hear a sound of thunder. Okay? Most likely, that means that Eccles is dead. Okay? A student told me that another teacher told her that Travis killed himself. Or... You can even say a sound of thunder it sounds like a dinosaur is outside, which is according to the movie, that horrible movie that we watched last week. Either way, see, that's the beauty of literature. I don't care what you say, just as long as you can prove it, okay? With textual evidence, as stated by the Common Core. Now, back to the directions. Read a sound of thunder. Please don't just use my summary. Actually read it, and in two to three paragraphs... Tell me, what's the theme of A Sound of Thunder, and how does the author use one literary element, that's all here, choose one, how does the author use one literary element to show the theme of A Sound of Thunder? Okay, this is what I got as the theme of A Sound of Thunder. Okay, don't steal my words, you're not going to get 100 if you steal my words. Now, <clears throat> I noticed the literary technique called parallelism. Why'd I choose parallelism? Because I know that none of you are going to choose it. So I made this very difficult. So nobody can choose parallelism. You can choose character. You can choose uh, metaphor. You can choose simile. But do tell me that parallelism is used to show the theme of the Sound of Thunder because I'll know where you got it. It came from my brain. Now, 
here's the outline that you filled out. And please, you have to get the outline done right. If you get the outline done wrong, your essay is going to be wrong. Planning is the most important part of the essay. If you can plan it right, you can do it right. Now, let's fill in the outline, okay? I got the theme over here. I have the litter element over here. And I'm just going to tell the reader, I'm going to explain how parallelism shows the theme over here. Now, fill in the body of the outline, okay? What's the litter element that's used? Parallelism. I defined it over here. Um, what's a quote that shows parallelism? It's right here. How does the quote show parallelism? It's right here. How does that quote show the theme? It's right here. And two is always better than one. So I have another quote that shows parallelism. And I explain the parallelism in that quote. And then I go on to explain how the parallelism in that quote shows the theme. Okay. And now I get to the conclusion. Very easy. Just restate the theme. I like to get fancy and throw in one more quote that shows parallelism to make my point that parallelism does indeed show the theme. And I like to end uh, this essay with explaining why the author probably chose the litter element to show parallelism. Now, let's begin writing it. Bang! I started writing the introduction. I just take all this, I throw it in here, and I put some fancy language. Okay. I try to begin with a hook, which means I start with something interesting, and then I get to the thesis, my pain point. Okay, by the way, this is just the first draft. Now, let's write the body. I just put this all together, and I glued it with some fancy words and transitions, and I made my point clear. Feel free to pause the video. Now, conclusion. I just said what I already said, okay? And I kind of try to go back to the beginning because, you know... I heard that's what good readers do. Remember, this is the first draft. Look at that. That's terrible. Ah, there you go. All right, final draft. Bang! Feel free to pause it and read it in all its glory. I am proud of my writing. Uh, in another video, I'll probably read the writing. Takeaways! What can you learn from this video? Notice how I used parallelism throughout my essay to convey the use of parallelism throughout the story. Wow! That's what I went to college for. Now, let me tell you, kids, I was not the greatest writer when I was high school. I was pretty bad when I was in college. But I read a lot. I read a lot of nonfiction. I read a lot of fiction because I was forced to teach fiction in school. I wrote a journal. Yes, I am very sensitive, and I need to write a journal about all the pain going through my life. Like period six, every day. Okay, I write for school. I write letters to people, and I actually study for grammar. I got a 550 on the SAT as a 10-year English teacher. Yes, folks, that's who's teaching your kids today. But, oh, that's who was teaching your children. But I studied grammar, and I improved to a 760, which proves that you don't have to be great in grammar to be an English teacher. The state of our society today, pretty sad. Now, practice students, you have to work hard. This essay is no walk in the park, okay? You need to understand the reading. Think about it. You have to understand the reading. You have to understand the vocabulary. You have to understand how the author structured it. You need to find the theme of what you just read. Tell me, why did the author write the story? The author's not going to say it. You just have to know it after reading it. And then after you found the theme, you have to explain how a literal, literary in the element... Yeah. You have to explain how... A literary element in the story, whether it's characters, simile, oh my god, that's horrible. Simile, see, nobody's perfect. Simile, metaphor, setting, hyperbole, personification, show how one literary element shows the theme. And then you have to find quotes that help put your essay together. And you have to write in standard written English. This is not easy, but you can do it. You know why? Because you will practice. You will practice reading. You are practicing vocabulary. You will practice finding the theme. You will define literary elements, and you will start to notice them. And you will be able to explain how a literary element shows the theme in the future and use quotes to back it up. And write in standard English. And how are you going to do that? Because you will practice. And because I am your teacher. And I will not let you fail unless you fail yourself. To improve your writing, 
visit my website, sign up for my newsletter, and if you email me, I'll send you my five lesson course, five grammar lessons that you should have learned in school, but didn't, because education today is bougie. I like to end this with a quote. Honest Dave, I walk slowly, but I never walk backward. And that is my mantra, and it should be yours. You may be a poor writer, but just keep getting better. Don't go backwards. Stay the course. Live the dream. You will succeed. Happy writing, and God bless.